Welcome to the Cultivate Church Planting Podcast. We believe that the gospel is the hope of the world and that the world needs more gospel-centered churches. All right, welcome to the Cultivate Church Planting Podcast, and I am joined today by two lovely women who have uh, joined us for a great talk about women in church planting and women in ministry, uh, especially in church ministry. And I have with me uh, Brenda Leavenworth, who is amazing, and she has uh, spearheaded the When She Leads ministry within CGN. And uh, I also have with me uh, Krista Fox, and she and her husband have just moved back from Brazil. Mm-hmm. Brazil! <laughs> Baling! It's yeah. fun to Baling. say it. Uh, and um, they planted a church there yeah. and had an amazing ministry. I've just gotten to know. Um, her a little bit and her story and so i've invited them to come on to this show because we need more women involvement in church and especially in church planting we've got a goal to plant a thousand churches within um calvary chapel (laughs) and uh you know it's not just us guys that are out there doing it you're gonna need some women (laughs) yeah (laughs) need some help (laughs) that's right so um welcome to the show guys and uh yeah and um, we've been here at a, a, a vision uh, meeting here at CGN and just had a great talk about the importance of supporting not only pastors' wives, but also women in ministry and churches. And I'd love to talk about it a little bit more today in regards to church planting, because yeah. it's not just the churches that are established, but it's the ones that we want to get started. And, um, you know, women, uh, not even wives, some are unmarried that are instrumental in planting these churches that we're talking about. Yeah. So. Let's get into it. First of all, though, Brenda, talk about um, your church and your husband, Ted, who's awesome. And he's got a podcast of his own. Yeah, um, Leadership Collective. I'll put a, put a plug in for yeah, Leadership yeah, Collective. Yeah, we'll put a link on that, Leadership Collective, <laughs> with uh, Pastor Rob Salvato, too. It's yep. an awesome podcast, so I'm, yep. a, I'm a fan. So tell us about the ministry. So um, I'm from Reliance Church in Temecula, California, and Ted and I have uh, planted two churches. One we planted in 1992 when um, we had no idea what it meant to church plant. We just knew that we wanted Christian friends around us. And so um, at that time, Calvary had the Pastors Wanted list. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> was that like Pastors Wanted, like Dead or Alive like, list? I or, think, or Wanted yeah. Pastors to we plant churches? We didn't know churches. it was going to kill okay. us, but <laughs> <laughs> or that people were going to put us on their posters looking <laughs> yeah. for us. But, oh. Wanted. But, yeah, we, we, put, we started a Calvary Chapel when we didn't even know what a Calvary Chapel was. We'd never stepped foot into a Calvary Chapel. We just knew the reputation. We knew that you could call and they would send a pastor out and say, hey, we have this Bible study. Can you send us a pastor? And they did. And that took us through the first year. And then um, we had a, another guy come in that was there for 15 years. So Ted served as the executive pastor for 15. So uh, he has, okay. we planted the church in our living room, but we had no business being, he, we weren't ready for he wasn't ready to be a pastor so we had a pastor come in he served as the executive pastor for 15 so we have that experience then in 2007 god called him to lay down his power his position and his paycheck and he said there was a fourth one that he wasn't uh quite ready for and that was pride and so (laughs) god spent the next two years gutting him like a fish he says (laughs) and um so 2007 we went on an adventure of faith and started all over and that one was harder because then we did know what we were getting to do and so that one was a little more difficult and so we planted a church there in temecula thinking why are we here There's all these churches, um, but God called us to teach the Bible and teach it well and teach it thoroughly and um, leave the results up to him. And so we've been there for about 15, 16 years. He serves as the senior pastor and yeah, it's uh, awesome. it's going good. Is the yeah this last Sunday was crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. It was awesome. Easter. Good, good. good. Okay, Krista, what about you? Tell us about Brazil. So, yeah, so we, Brazil is our second church plant as well. Kind of like Brenda, we planted it back at our home state of Denver. My husband was assistant pastor for a few years before we left to become missionaries. And um, it was interesting. We didn't go out as church planters in Brazil, but we went out in faith to just serve the Lord. And the very first thing that he showed me when we got to Brazil were all of these individuals in prostitution on the corners of 
our streets, right up the street from our house. Every corner I saw was a worker. And I remember thinking and telling my husband, Kyle, I was like, what is going on here? Like, what, what are all these individuals doing? There was, surely has to be a church or a nonprofit or a mission group or an organization, that got something going on to help these individuals because I could not understand why there were so many. And let me get involved. Let me be involved with something already going because I didn't really want to start anything. And so we prayed and we looked and we searched and there was nothing. There was no church helping. There was no ministry. There was no government thing helping at the time. This was eight years ago. And so I prayed and the Lord put a huge burden on my heart. And I just prayed. I remember I was praying one day for the Lord, to the Lord. And I was just like, Lord, if you've given me this work to do for you, I don't know anything about human trafficking at the time. I don't know anything about prostitution work. I didn't know anything about any of this. I was like, so just tell me, Lord. And he gave me the verse, 20, Proverbs 24, 11. And it says, rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. And I was sitting on the patio of my house in Brazil. And I'll probably cry a little now. Yeah. <laughs> and I can still see the vision in my head that these people are just walking to their death and nobody is doing anything for them. And the Lord told me then, he's like, you're going to be doing something. And I didn't know what. I just knew I didn't want them going off like sheep to the slaughter to death to mm. hell. Like I knew I loved them. Yeah. And that was the burden I had. And you know, it's interesting. He gave me the burden. He gave me the call. We named the ministry that, but he had me sit for two years just praying because it wasn't time. Yeah. And so, but what the Lord did in that is give my husband a burden for the church. And so okay. the Lord gave me the burden for these individuals, which then sparked a burden in my husband's heart for a church that if these people wanted to come out of pro or even just come to a church that they'd be welcome because we were searching for other churches like hey if we work in your area with these individuals can they go to your church oh, can they yeah. get connected and they're like yeah. eh, it's complicated which means no and you're like what do you yeah. mean it's not complicated it's complicated and, and are so, they gonna like clean themselves <laughs> up and get yeah, yeah. become christians before yeah. they come in because and that's a lot of the thought that we fight down there in brazil is that yeah. it, on the outward you gotta look good yeah, and yeah. so and that's not true and so the lord put it on my husband's heart like we need a church that's open to receiving whoever mm -hmm. and whoever needs Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's how Calvary Beling then started. And so that was over five, almost six years ago. Six years ago. And, nice. my, and so my husband, yeah, we planted that church. He's senior pastor, well, was up until this a few weeks ago, because now we've handed everything over to the Brazilian Nationals wow. and it's thriving and it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's how Calvary Beling started. I love is it. Because we, my husband saw this in me you know, and my burden, and then the Lord gave him this burden, and we worked together in these things, and it's still going. That's awesome. And it's just neat. Yeah. That's awesome. It reminds me of, because uh, we went to East Africa, and we, we planted the church there, but the way we got there was through my wife and her heart and burden for, um, you know, the kids and orphans and stuff like that, and she, would, she heard a missionary speak at the Bible College, Calvary Chapel Bible College, about the need that was there and these missionaries that are doing this work and we need more laborers in the field, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And we need more money. For <laughs> <laughs> money, people. Yeah, money and people. And she really had a heart to go and serve in Uganda specifically. And I didn't. I was like, okay. I wanted to be a missionary somewhere, but we ended up uh, going there because of her mm -hmm. passion and her desire. And then we worked together, just similar to this, yeah. to plant the church. And yeah. I think it's a great point to get that, get a church, like we're not just missionaries out um, doing the good work, but church planting is the Great Commission. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Brian Broderson was on the show here, and that's the one thing that he said that really stuck with me is, we're talking about the Great Commission here, it is to church plant, because all these other good things that we want to do, we want to help the trafficking, we want to help in uh, yeah. the orphans and uh, mm -hmm. water wells, whatever it is, it all centers around yeah, a, local a, a healthy local church in yeah. the community. Because so. these people, they need a community. They need a church home to go to. Yeah. And so it does start there. And, and that's what we saw. And that's what we really developed in Calvary Beling. And, you know, you can't train the whole church to be out on the streets doing work like we yeah. did with Proverbs Ministry. Yeah. But we do have a great team for that. But you can set the culture of your church. So when people come that are different into your church, 
they're they know the gospel yeah. they know to receive them in love they know to give them yeah, some time yeah. mm-hmm. when they might not look like the rest of you know what you think it's okay yeah you know yeah. you just come in and you love them and you're going to share the gospel and things are going to change but yeah. they need to have that time and they need to have that and i love space. that the leadership of the church which i would include you in that leadership of the church mm-hmm. is spreading that vision from day one like yeah. this is a church where our heart is yeah. As you led in that vision of reaching those, yeah. uh, the prostitution community and the trafficked uh, people, this is a place where they're going to be welcome. Yeah. And, you know, if that's not for everybody, you know, not mm-hmm. everybody, it's not easy for everybody to be part of a church. People like to come to church and be comfortable and look nice yeah. and do all that. <laughs> um, or for other reasons, but you let them know. You know that was spread down through the church and through and the. And it's it's super interesting. Like our church has all sorts of people. You yeah. know, it has the doctor and the lawyer, and then we have the homeless. And like I said, we didn't have to have a training seminar for the whole church. Like, oh, when you see the you know the drunk person that's passed outside the front of the church, like we don't have to have a training on how to work with them. Mm-hmm. They already know we're going to bring them in. Yeah, and yeah. they're invited. And when somebody comes in, that's maybe a little, uh, you know. And really, maybe they're drunk <laughs> off the street, crazy, and they want to they want to sing on the stage. Uh, you know, I don't. Are you talking about Kyle, your yeah. husband? Yeah, Kyle. I've never met him, but we've Kyle. talked to him. <laughs> we've tried to do an intervention. Yeah, he's just he's out of control. Yeah. He's unruly. But the church responds, and I think it's true. It's because they see how we've done these things, yeah. and that's our heart. And so we have a church's. The church's heart is after that, and yeah. it's just neat. It's super cool to see. Yeah. This is kind of off topic, but are you kind of sad that you left? I'm super sad. Oh, don't say it right yeah. now. <laughs> don't, can't say that. I'm like four days out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. right, because you're right. You're just coming back. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. sorry. That's okay. Just I know how you feel, down. if it yeah. helps. I know it how it help. is. It does help. It does help. But to, to know that you've handed the church over and yeah. you're on to the next phase of ministry and life, it's, yeah. it's uh, great. Yeah. Love it. And that's the thing about church planting is, you know, a lot of people are like, I'm not planting a church because, you know, I don't want to live in this other place for my whole life. I feel God calling me mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. But a lot of times it's pass it off to right, the next yeah. person. Uh, and there's always a next person. Unless yeah. your church is going to die with you, there's always a next person yeah. that's going to take over and, and do and, the work. And I think to acknowledge that church planting is a gifting from God. Yeah. And some people are church planters. They go, they establish the work. Then yeah. they leave. Yeah. I, I think it's the hardest work because you're doing the stuff in the beginning that like you have to be generalist, right? You yeah, have to do everything. Right. You do take out the trash, <laughs> you do the dishes, you wash the, you know, you're preaching, you're doing children's ministry, you're making the coffee, like you're doing it all. I made coffee today. I know. And church. then <laughs> like those, those aren't the glory days, you know? It actually overflowed and all the grounds went everywhere. So <laughs> I saw that. It's, did you say that? I stepped that? away oh, from I'm the sorry. kitchen. I was like, I'm did not getting blamed for this, but yeah. I'm going to come back if it's good. <laughs> That's my bad. <laughs> no, we've got a great team that, that normally helps out in that. But you're absolutely right. It's um, You're wearing a lot of hats. You're doing a lot oh. of things. And um, it's not for everybody. It's hard work. It I, is. It, you know, I've planted several churches, but I feel like I don't want to do it. It's hard, it's hard work, but it's, it's rewarding, too. It's yeah. rewarding. And it's needful because some things that people couldn't do in the beginning, you can hand it off at that like next stage and they can take exactly. it from there, yeah. but they couldn't pioneer. They're not the yeah. ones with the machetes, yeah. you know, cutting the new path. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're establishing it and it's going forward. Great. Okay. Brenda, when she leads, what is it? What are, what are you all about? <laughs> <laughs> so we started this, um, I guess, uh, initiative within CGN called When She Leads. And um, one of the things that we saw, like you were saying, it starts with a burden. And I have a burden for women in ministry, not only the pastor's wife, the assistant pastor's wife, but then um, those that are in administration, those that are in church law, those that are serving in children's ministry, leading worship teams, like there are high level leaders Mm -hmm. and, and servants within the church that we, we work in this together, right? Yeah. Men and women, um, and we're complementarian in nature, so we believe that women can do a lot in the church except for be an elder. Um, and mm-hmm. so within that context, we just have this burden for women who are unsupported. And so we just thought, and God had put this vision on my heart years and years and years ago, and I thought he was gonna do it a different way. Um, but just to be a, a leader of leaders 
and to so started with that burden and we just want to have women come alongside women help equip them help connect them one to another because i think we need a community as well and it's great to integrate but we just like you guys need another man to go to we Mm -hmm. need other women to Mm -hmm. go to that understand what it is to be married to a man in ministry what it is to be a single woman in ministry what it is to be a woman who maybe is married to an unsaved man but in ministry maybe one that's not involved in ministry all these different things so we want to come alongside we want to equip women because we believe too that the more we're equipped by the word of god the not the easier that ministry is going to be but the we're going to do it the way jesus did it Mm -hmm. and that's our that's our north star we want to do a um, we want to do ministry biblically we want to do it according to the word of god and so we want to equip women we want to connect women with one another for community and then we just want to be there to support pray for and just build that community of of women um and you know i i like to say that you know cgn is a network not only for men it's for women <laughs> yeah. too it's not a boys club yeah, where we're trying yeah, <laughs> we're trying yeah not we're here. here yeah we're not and, going anywhere uh, you've always been here it's just now there's a place at the table there's a there's yes. a bigger uh, involvement yeah and i think women are scared of of that so i think we need to be clear this is not women's lib, like, move over, Are you over, guys trying men. to take over? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is this feminism? <laughs> uh, God forbid. <laughs> um, no, uh, but we're in ministry together, and there's so much that, that we do. We're a body. We're family. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. moms, there's dads, there's uncles, there's cousins. We all work together, just like the family works. Yeah, a lot of churches um, neglect the importance of women in leadership and in ministry, some overemphasize it and we know we joke around is this feminism whatever um but that's that's a a a problem that can happen too where it's kind of flipped the pendulum swings Mm -hmm. what would you say i mean as far as uh women in ministry women in leadership um and i was thinking about this like my wife lynn she's and you guys know her and she's awesome um awesome yeah just in case you're listening you're awesome (laughs) lynn we love you we love you you. you're awesome Yep. And, but I was thinking, you know, as we were, uh, I was thinking about this, um, podcast episode, um, what, what, what is it that our church would be missing if it wasn't for Lynn or for our women, Mm -hmm. for our leader, women leaders, what would the church be lacking? And my, I would like to hear what you have to say, but my conclusion was the church probably wouldn't be here Mm -hmm. if it wasn't for, or it'd be really, you know, malnourished, I guess you could say, unhealthy. I would, I would agree with a lot of that. And I, my husband, Kyle, would too. He tells me a lot. He's like, we couldn't do this, our mm-hmm. church, Calvary Bling, without the women. Um, you know, it, we're needed. You know, I shared how Calvary Bling started. And I don't know how that is with everybody, but I know in our church in Calvary Bling, the ministries are strong because a lot of them are led by women. And Kyle ge- gave our... Um, Full, a lot of liberty in that mm-hmm. and he supported it you know and yeah. they're working in their giftings and because these women are allowed to work in their giftings these things are just exploding and they're exciting yeah. and you know some of the women that just kind of wondered you know Calvary Chapel in Brazil like especially in our, the state we live in um, nobody knows about it nobody understands it's not like here in the states where everybody has heard of it they don't even know anything about it mm-hmm. and so there's a lot of questions and one of the questions is you know are women allowed to tea what's going on why don't I ever see you Krista they're mm-hmm. teaching yeah, on a yeah. Sunday and I explained to them, you know, the the view we have. And then I asked them, though, I'm like, do you ever do you feel like left out? Do you feel like there's something you can't do in our church? And all of them have said no. I'm like, do you feel supported? You know, is Kyle, you know, and the rest of the, you know, the leadership, are they supporting you and your gifting? And they're like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so. And so there's no they're not feeling like they're missing anything. Well, that's that brings me to an important point, especially within Calvary Chapel, because I've been part of Calvary Chapel for a long time. And um, it's almost like, especially for pastor's wives, if we're talking about women in ministry, for pastor's wives especially, it's like, okay, he's the senior pastor, he's the head of the church, you know, he does all the ministry and vision and everything. And then the pastor's wife job is, you know, to do uh, women's ministry right. and uh, children's, mi- <laughs> children's ministry and play the piano. Right. And, um, but I mean, what, what are you hoping to see change um, from that kind of mentality to 
All right, because what if Krista's not gifted to do women's? I don't know if you are or not, but if what if she's she not is. gifted to she is uh, to do women's ministry yeah. or any of these other things, or even to do ministry within that local church at all? Maybe it's some parachurch group that's you know right. working on stuff. Well, I mean, how are we working to? to change the mentality to enable women to have more of a role in leadership and, and in the church? I, I think, to go back to your first question, what would we be missing? Half the church. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. statistically, at least 50% or 60% of the church are women. Um, to your second point, I think that we all have a lot of work to do. This isn't just the men need to get on board with this. <laughs> like, I think we as women, we have work to do too. I, th I think we all have to intentionally take a look at this and go, how can we biblically and healthily get this right? Mm -hmm. um, not just based on tradition, not just based on um, what we see in the world, but what we see in the scriptures. You know, Paul traveled with so many women, you know, Aquila mm -hmm. and Priscilla sitting down and, and um, doing these things and, and, and sharing the word of God. And you see just all these examples of women deacons. And yeah. I mean, for years, you know, we're going to commission deacons in our church, yeah. female deacons for one. Why? Because we believe it's biblically, we, we, biblical. We believe that the scriptures teach it. Why didn't we do it? For really unhealthy reasons. Yeah. You know, maybe the 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 culture wouldn't take it. Maybe yeah. the people weren't ready for it. We don't want. I've heard this from from men. We don't want the drama. That it's, <laughs> have you heard that? I'm not saying that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not saying that. You Maybe. heard Brian say it here. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want the drama. Yeah. Don't want the drama. <laughs> but but That's funny. we because it's biblical, not a biblical objection it's just i don't want the drama <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to get healthier okay. in that way and i think all of us are trying to get healthier so mm -hmm. we as women we're trying to navigate how do we go into a meeting when yeah, we're sitting yeah, with yeah, men yeah, yeah. you know because we are more emotional so maybe we have to check that at the door mm -hmm. and just go in with a with a professional attitude and like we're okay we're gonna yeah. we're gonna check our emotions maybe men have to come in with not having that preconceived idea of what this is going to yeah, be or not right, wanting yeah. to hear a woman's voice or being intimidated yeah, mm -hmm. yeah i have felt intimidated in meetings from i'll tell ted don't ask me any questions i don't want to share my right. opinion why because then i'm going to be viewed as that person that is like uh, aggressive yeah, you know for a man yeah, yeah, aggression yeah, yeah. is a very much of a strength yeah yeah for women not so much yeah. you know what i mean and so it's just that balance it's i trying think, to correct that almost a little trying bit. trying to correct yeah. that a little bit i got a I, I got that um so uh brian bell kelly bell is part of the when she leads mm -hmm. initiative also awesome yes. also <laughs> awesome yes hi kelly um, you know we went to side note we went to israel with them when we planted a church in washington and my wife's name's Lynn yep. Kelly and my name's Brian Kelly and his name's Brian Bell and she's Kelly <laughs> yes. Bell so it was Brian and Brian's and Kelly's, Kelly's everywhere such a mess. Yes. it was a mess I call your wife Kelly all the time it was a mess. and I've heard other yeah, people she do always, it too. she gets Kelly all the time <laughs> and I get brain all the time brain well, just in like emails and stuff. Yeah, or Brian the Lesser. Brian the Lesser, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, Brian Bell, um, he he had a theology from a t-shirt and he sent me the picture of the t-shirt because I good. asked him. And it was about Jesus and his relation in women in ministry and, you know, Jesus. And it, I'll just read it. It says, uh, Jesus protected women, empowered women, honored women publicly, released the voice of women, confided in women, was funded by women, celebrated women by name, learned from women, respected women, and spoke of women as examples to follow. Mm -hmm. And then it says, our turn. So yeah, I and love I, that. I love that because then to be able to do that, you actually have to get to know the women yeah. in your church. Yeah. So the pastors and the leaders and the men, they can't just not talk to them or us yeah. you know we have to <laughs> you have to get to know us so yeah. we can we can do these things so you can entrust us with these things and that takes time you know in different areas so yeah. you know it's it's uncomfortable in some ways you know yeah. but there is a way to do it and to do it well do you think the fear is that just the women are going to start taking over the church and it's going to become unbiblical because that's like the criticism you mentioned complementarianism yeah. I, I had a really good joke for that because <laughs> 
you know, if someone doesn't know what complimentarian means, it means you go around complimenting people all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It's really easy to understand. Just like, blow you, up their bubble. You look great today. Yeah. yeah. We're complimentarian <laughs> around We're here. Compliments. You and look that's fantastic. The, you're just, you're, yeah, you look great. Yeah, I um, think they took Billy Graham's um, quote, you know, don't touch God's glory, women, or money. And it's like, we just took that a little too far. I think that's yeah. one of the fears uh, yeah. is that women are going to take over and there's a big um, fear coming out verbally uh -huh. um, in that. But I think also, you know, we're men and women. Mm -hmm. And so we have to we have to healthily be able to see each other as brothers and sisters and sin can get in there. And yeah. so I think that we have to be very biblical and very healthy about that. But I think there is a way to do that yeah. in a healthy way. That We're men and, and women, wise. but we've been gifted by the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, all of us, for, in this case, church planting. Mm -hmm. so right. Coming back to that initial church planting team, you know, I think back in all of our church plants that we've done, the women have been instrumental, not just in like, hey, come help me, you know, make the coffee, yeah, <laughs> right, right. but actually spearheading things like yeah. what you're talking about in your church plan and mm -hmm. what we're doing here. Our um, women, or our, not our women's, but our children's ministry, the whole thing is, is uh, we have a lady who runs it and she's amazing. Like I wish she could run the whole like church, but she's busy. <laughs> but anyway, she, um, you know, it would be, it wouldn't be what right. it is without that. Yeah. And to, I think what you're getting at and what, I'm, what we're learning at the, um, when she leads um, is how to, first of all, um, make that acceptable. Our worship leader is, and worship director, she oversees the whole thing, yeah. is a woman. Right. How to, how to enable that, first of all, make sure that's acceptable and um, not like just something that's done secretly, like, yeah, you're a great leader, but, mm -hmm. you know, don't get too vocal about it, but like really acknowledge that. Yeah. This is someone yeah. on our leadership team. Yes. And this is what they're doing. And we wouldn't be where we are today without that. Right. And still have that balance to where we're, we're being biblical about it. I mm -hmm. love that point, yeah. you know, because you could go yeah. to excesses and stuff. I think it's hard. Like, I don't know if it's people are fearful, because I guess that's more of a question for the men. Like, are they fearful that we're going to take the women are going to take it? I don't know. But I do know maybe a concern is how to do it um, and maintaining boundaries and to do it well you know, without compromising, because things can be awkward, you know, mm -hmm. and so how do you get to know the women in your church that have the calling, but yeah. still having your boundaries, because we are man and woman, and there are things, and you don't ever want to um, have a, you know, any room for the devil to come yeah, into yeah, anything, yeah. and yeah. so that does make things a little bit more harder. Does it make that you can't do it? No, but I think maybe in the past, that's maybe why some of the churches didn't. They're like, oh, I can't really, you know, get to know yeah. her or him because, you know, we're- There's gonna be extra challenges, gotta, so I'm just not gonna do it. Yeah, right. and so yeah. you've gotta think the through drama. those. You <laughs> yeah, know, the drama. you bring somebody else one. with you, you know? It's not yeah, a one-on-one yeah, -on -one yeah. thing. So yeah. you, and it does make things more complicated, but you protect, you know, the woman and her relationship mm -hmm. with her husband if she's married and the man with his, or his mm -hmm. wife. And mm -hmm. you gotta be wise in that. and. I think that can be hard too. And so of course it is a lot easier for guys to probably be like, I'm just gonna go with him because I can just go out to lunch with him really mm -hmm. quick and we can have a fast mm -hmm. talk. And But he may not be gifted for the thing no. that you want to get and done. That's the and problem. that's, who cares if you can go out to lunch with him, yeah. just, you know, you just work have, around it and then. And it just complicates it. So maybe that's part of it too. But yeah. I think the guys in the church that really are wanting to activate the women, like the full potential of the body, mm -hmm. they're going to navigate around that and they're going to be like, yeah, it might be more difficult, but I'm just going to take, you know, this other guy with me yeah, and yeah, we're going to yeah. go and we're going to have a nice, a nice yeah, talk yeah. and it's yeah, going to yeah, be, yeah. it's going to be good. Yeah. 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 Especially in church planting. I mean, you, you rarely get to like have a, it's not like there's a whole bunch of people that are <laughs> gifted that you're just going to get to select from. Like it's a, you Time. know, like you're running a football team or something and you're drafting. Um, you work with the people that God has called and gifted to your specific situation, right. both men and women. And you have to be able to adapt. I think a lot of these young church planners who have grown up in a church where women were not included in the ministry right. um, are struggling because they don't see the potential of the women's role in planting a new church, like big roles. And so I think to kind of open that up, I mean, I went... I went and took over a church. It was kind of a kind of a replant, but um, great church. And it was the the worship leader 
was um, was a woman, but she wasn't the worship leader. Her the pastor was the worship leader. He said, "Okay, so." It, you know, I don't Aww, want to get into she details. Was a secret worship yeah, she was a secret, but no, it, it gets. But wait, there's more. <laughs> she uh, and she was extremely gifted, one of the best singers, worship leaders that I've ever heard. Very talented musician, and she would be up on stage, and her her husband had to be up there with her because she wasn't allowed to pray on the stage because she was a woman. A woman I forgot can't. you had cameras. I don't have my poker face <laughs> on. <laughs> We're like this. We're like <laughs> Most people would just be listening, but uh, just so if you're just listening, Brenda has shock and shock awe on her and face. Um, and that was, you know, because of this misconstrued thing of, you know, women have a role in the church and men have a role in the church and this is a woman's role. And, this is a, and that was kind of distorted a little bit or a lot of it. So she had to teach her husband how to sing. He wasn't. He was. A, he could do all right. He couldn't play any instrument, but he just had to stand up there and and be the worship leader on stage. Mm. And she was just a guitar player and singer. I guess that was okay. Yeah. But um, then he had to pray, so she couldn't. She wasn't allowed to pray on stage. And then when we came into the church, they told me about that, and I I laughed. I thought it was a joke at first. I'm like, oh, that's a good joke, funny. Yeah. And then now they're like serious. And then when I said no, no. Um, I said to this guy, you don't, you don't have to sing anymore. You don't have to be on stage. She's like, oh, good. I didn't like you anyway. I didn't like being up there. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> how awkward for him. And then I said to this girl that, you know, you're the worship leader. I'm, God hasn't called me to be the worship leader. I'm, I'm called to teach and to be an elder of the church because we mentioned the, the male role of the elder in the church. Right. That's what we believe. That's what complementarianism. Um, but you're called to have vision and direction from God Within the vision of the church, of course. Under but, his leadership. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's your, and I, I'm, I, I've never seen someone, I mean, they're already gifted tremendously in worship and that sort of thing, but someone change and just brighten up and just really thrive. And it, it just changed everything. Just that mm -hmm. one yeah. thing of this woman who was called to this yeah. position that was not allowed to operate mm -hmm. in that because of that right. tradition. It's so hard. I remember when my first years of ministry, the first church that we helped plant back in our, um, Colorado, our home state, I've used this analogy before when we were talking, but it's like kind of blooming where you're planted. You're supposed to be able to bloom. And I had this vision like, you know, I'm coming up and there's like these hard rocks and then, but the church I was at, it was really hard because they just didn't, they didn't understand me or my mm -hmm. calling and they just weren't supporting that. And I had just kind of had to go to the children's ministry and that was okay. I had yeah, the you young kids, that. I could do that. <laughs> and I had young kids then, but I knew my heart were for women yeah. and hurting women. And so I would, pl I felt like I would like sprout up a little bit yep. and then there was another rock on it and you're like, oh, and you get crushed back down. And then you just keep, you know, trying to big, go out out of this hard ground. And it shouldn't be like that yeah. in a church. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be like that. Like we were in leadership, we were new, like Brenda and Ted were in their first, you know, church plant. We were like that too, young in Christ, young in all this, not really knowing what we we're doing. And I kind of thought, well, this is just how it is for women. Like, this is just what it is for me. Like, yeah. I, I'm gonna, I really feel like I'm called to do this, but I can't, so I'm going to do this. And just praise the Lord, he brought people into my life that are like, no, Mm -hmm. You can do this. It right. gave me confidence in that, even when I wasn't being supported in the yeah. church. And I'm like, oh, I can. Yeah. And then my husband was like, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Good. And Good for him. Mm -hmm. And then and, we did. Um, <laughs> the funny thing about that church that I was talking about is on the back wall of the sanctuary, there was this huge mural, and it was the women, after the resurrection, it was the empty tomb, and it was the women running from the empty tomb to go tell yeah. the first, <laughs> you know, Wait, to be the evangelists <laughs> to the apostles, <laughs> who, by the way, when they were told, said, we don't believe that. You're just telling us a story, and that was, uh, you know, as you know, the beginning of the, yeah. the church and everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think there's just such a big, a big place for this kind of teaching, especially within Calvary Chapel, a biblical balanced view of this and right. when we're going out planting these churches we want to plant churches that have the balanced view mm -hmm. of what it means to be a women a woman leader a woman in ministry and also for um, pastors wives who are called into ministry and yeah. leadership along yeah. together with their husbands yeah and i think that that needs to be set free let's be honest those scriptures are hard to navigate mm -hmm. they're hard to figure out some of them seem 
very vague to me. You know, the stuff in First Timothy, I think mm -hmm. it is, talking about, you know, women teaching and, mm -hmm. okay, what does that mean? And we've all come up with our own idea yeah. of what that means. And, and I, someone had said it before, but just giving people grace mm -hmm. to figure that out along the way, because I think that we've been taught one thing and we're kind of coming up and saying, is that really what his intention, what was his intention yeah. here? And and everybody kind of takes those things differently. Yeah. But I think having grace and giving the pastor the ability, the scene, the elder of the church, it's supposed to be the guy we say that's overseeing the church, yeah. giving him the ability to interpret that for his congregation, what that looks like. It doesn't mean one's right. I think that we're all right and we're all wrong mm -hmm. all at the same time. We might miss this. Yeah, we're all gonna be corrected when we get to yes. heaven. We're gonna be like, oh yeah. But mm -hmm. let's be gracious towards one another for In the meantime, how yeah. we're interpreting, unless it's like ridiculous, like yeah, the man, yeah, yeah. the poor man, how humiliating for the man to yeah. stand on the stage. Yeah, he was, he was funny too. <laughs> <laughs> he was poor Girl, guy. we can't be late to church, he's we gotta see a, that worship. He's such a nice guy too. Well, the sad thing about that story is they had confided in me before I there was an announcement that I was coming to be the new pastor and they said the very Sunday that was announced was the Sunday they just had decided they had been at this church for 10 15 years that they were gonna leave the church because mm -hmm. you know that was just a stifling experience yeah not being able to operate in the gifts that God has given you is very stifle it it's quenches hurting. that's when do not quench yeah. the spirit that's right. what I felt like in the earlier days in the very first, like had my husband not been in the second guy at the church, I felt like that hurt I had gone through, not mm -hmm. just with not being able to operate in my giftings, which by the way, I was just beginning to understand what yeah, my giftings yeah. were. Yeah. They weren't encouraged and I didn't know much about it. I think that would have been something, had the Lord not made me stay, it would have been something where people leave the church. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. and so I'm so thankful that my husband was in the position, he, it wasn't really, it wasn't a choice, but I was thinking, man, if I wasn't in this position, it's so easy to just be like, you know what, yeah. bye, yeah. I'm not doing this. And But yeah. the Lord was so grace, you know, just graceful and merciful and protective and yeah. carried me through. Yeah. Let me ask you one question, then I'll, we'll, we'll end with a, a final thought. Um, what would you say to someone who's part of a church planning team or even part of an existing church, a woman that is struggling in this way with an inability to be able to, um, to fulfill what she believes uh, God is calling her to do? How can that person, I mean, we're talking to leaders of churches, so right. it's easy for leaders because you just say, okay, now we're going to, you know, slowly or change these policies or whatever it is. Um, what would you say to someone that's in a church or in a church planning team that is not really being allowed to fulfill that, what God's called them to do as a woman? I mean, first I would probably encourage, obviously prayer, mm -hmm. prayer. Yeah. Um, I would encourage a woman to start a dialogue about what she feels gifted in and how she can um, feel like she's using those giftings. Obviously, she's not in charge, so depending on the philosophy of ministry, I would ask questions about what's your philosophy of ministry? Mm -hmm. What do you believe about women in ministry? Because maybe it's just not a good fit yeah, for yeah, the person. Yeah. Um, maybe if she feels like she should be doing something. I mean, God has used that to move people on like, you know, okay, I, I'm never going to be able to serve. But I also think having open and honest conversations about let's look at what scripture says. What, it, what does it say? How can I mm -hmm. fulfill this? Sometimes it's just the leadership going, man, I haven't considered that. I heard mm. one situation mm -hmm. where the guys were meeting in the room and they kept running out to the office to get the answers from the administrator <laughs> of the church who had all the information that they needed for their hey meeting. Hey guys, I have a, an idea. Why don't you bring the administrator? In? <laughs> and she was bold enough to say, mm -hmm. hey, why don't you just bring me in the room? I have yeah. all the information I could share it with you. And it was like, because people might think you have ideas. <laughs> yeah. Light bulb. You know, we yeah. could have her in the room without feeling threatened. She's yeah. not unbiblical because she's sitting in a meeting yeah. trying to help mm -hmm. yeah. the elders of the church make yeah, a decision. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't have to be an elder to yeah, do that. Yeah. So I think it's opening up those conversations about let's let's talk about this. Even with our in our own network, we're just having a conversation about this. Like these are healthy conversations mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. 
uh, leadership is tension. Leadership is going into that conflict and going, okay, let's wrestle through this. Yeah. Is what we thought for 40 years, is that right? Is, you know, what's right? What's wrong? And I've, I've like just labored over these, mm-hmm. these kind mm-hmm. of women texts, like what's God getting at here? What's Paul actually saying? Yeah, yeah. What was going on in the culture? What's going on in our church? How can I navigate that? How can I use my gifts yeah. in a way that's fulfilling and I can and I can uh, put wisdom into the church, help build culture, help leadership. My strength, I think, is leadership. So how can I how can I affect yeah. the church in that way without overstepping mm-hmm. the the laws that God has given? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't have yeah. to worry about oh I feel less than because God's given that in his word yeah. that we believe that elders should run the church yeah. and they should be male. I am completely yeah. okay with that yeah. and I am completely submissive to that order Because you're structure. in a healthy church that values and gives place yeah. to women in leadership. Yeah, I feel valued. Yeah. I feel and if heard. it doesn't, you just yeah. talk to your husband and tell him to. <laughs> Yes, I, I would just going to make a joke there. I I you were going to make a joke? Oh, no, you don't have to put the filter on around here. Tell me later. You don't have to put the filter on around here. If I boy. could just add a little bit I, about, because what you were saying is like, what if they feel like you're, they're not using their giftings? And yeah, I agree yeah. with everything you said, Brenda, of having the dialogue, talking, and then submitting. But I would also add waiting. Yep. Because and, yeah, and, that's a good word. and don't fight for it. Mm-hmm. You don't if the Lord has put a burden on you and he's called you to this work, you will be doing it. You don't have to exactly. fight. You yep. don't have to Amen. to argue with anybody. You can sit back and wait. I mean, I've had to wait for years and things and you will be called. The Lord will rise, like mm-hmm. pull you up and use you in the time. And so there's just no point in that. So just do everything pray talk to them when it be quiet and wait Mm -hmm. and the lord will the lord will use you and yeah learning mm -hmm. to submit when we don't because we think oh i'm submissive well submission doesn't really begin until you disagree with something (laughs) right otherwise it's just agreement (laughs) so so if you're you're learning submission is a really good quality to have that that okay i don't agree with that leader but i can submit I think that's a great lesson for yeah. even And submit you to later. one another, the scripture yeah. says. Yes. So let's end with some last words. Man, this episode has gone by way too fast. I'd love to have <laughs> yeah. you guys back on it's again. So it's also been a lot of drama, too, because yeah, there's more women Whoopsies. here. So there it's we been go. a lot of drama. There a lot of we drama. go again, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I just want to point out to our listeners that when she leads, you have a podcast yourself, uh, yes. Brenda. And so go search that podcast up and they've got a bunch of episodes. They're awesome. Yep. And on an, every podcast platform, yep. when she leads.org, we, yep. we got zoom calls going on. We have Karen coaches. Yep. We do live events. We go to churches and equip women yep. and, um, do a conference Friday night, Saturday. We'll fly in, we'll equip, we'll spend yep. time with your women. We love, 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 love that. Yeah. Yeah. Church, no church too small or too big. You guys will come in and, and yeah. do it. So yep. it's awesome. And, um, so check that out when she leads.org yep. and then the podcast as well. Yeah. And uh, we'll also keep you um, updated on what the, the Fox family is going to be yeah. <laughs> doing in the future. We'll be Thanks. praying for you guys. Thank but you. any last words, Krista? Um, just thank you. Thank you for having us on. Thank you for this talk and this dialogue and opening it up. I'm really excited to see what yeah. God's going to do in yeah. all these women's lives and yeah. and the husbands that are hearing this. Yeah. I'm excited I'll to, to say, hear I've got this great podcast you should yeah. listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda, what do you have to say? I'm just, I'm, I'm appreciative that we're having the conversation. It's been exciting to um, even more so collaborate with men in, I mean, I, I will just tell you, I've been in ministry 30 years and she had asked me, would you come to Brazil? I'm like, no, I don't like dirt. <laughs> it's hot. I don't want to walk far. I hate the heat. They got good yeah. food, though. Yeah, oh, they do have amazing so food. Brazilian yeah. barbecue, oh, yeah. for sure. She'll come back for that. I yeah. will, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but in that collaboration, you know, we're talking about going to Uganda, and yep. we're talking about going to all these different places, and the Cultivate Ministry collaborating with When She Leads, and mm-hmm. it's just such a beautiful thing to like what can you do it, i'm a visionary so it's like mm-hmm. what could be yeah what can yeah, we yeah, do yeah, yeah. if we can collaborate with men and women in yeah. this biblical way like yeah. 
what might the Lord do? I it's think just awesome exciting. Things. Very exciting. Yeah, really. Yeah. Very exciting. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks. Thanks. Great.